Welcome back to another episode of Beers with Peers. I'm your host, Sandia. Today's guest is a rapper, producer. You catch his latest project, Braille Boys, anywhere you stream music. Please welcome to the show, Lord Raw. Hey, man. It's man. been a long time, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's been a very long time coming. It's good to be here, man. The funniest thing about this was that I've been told that you're like, I'm not a drinker. By multiple people, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just like, like, he's not a drinker. But I heard you get really jolly. Like Santa Claus, quote unquote. I'm mad friendly when I'm drunk as hell. I love like I'm that. like I'm like uncle friendly when I'm drunk. Like, <laughs> you start giving the cash. <laughs> you start giving out cash. <laughs> and he was Shit, like, I mean, bro. look, I don't, man, I don't, I've never been that drunk. Maybe. Right? <laughs> Dog, right into it. All right. All right, cool. Careful. Cheers. <laughs> A lot bad. It doesn't taste like anything. <coughs> Shit. As I said, your latest project, <laughs> your latest project was Braille Boys. It was one of your latest projects, and also um, Eat Your Fucking Food. Mm. Um, Braille Boys recently, actually, I think this past week was on the radio, right? Yeah, yeah. So we got. I ended up getting the track on the radio uh, through my man Don Savant at North Carolina Greensboro. Shouts out, bro. You Shout you saying? out, bro. Yeah, uh, he's been looking out like the past. Uh, two, three years, we had done like an interview for his uh, his media conglomerate called The Syndicate. Yeah. And uh, he's always looking like for artists from all 50 states and like he had reached out to me and like a few other artists from out here and shit. He asked me straight up, he's like, yo, let me get a radio version of Braille Boys. And I was like, it's easy. <laughs> Got that done, sent it to him and like, yeah, bro, had us on. How'd I feel? That's so, real special, Just man. to be on the, like, was, is this your ever, like, first time ever being on the radio? My first time doing it was through uh, an OG out here called Rocky Tyre, bro. Shouts out to you. He had invited us to be on a show that he was doing and shit. So we had went up there with him, uh, got to like speak a little bit on the radio. But that's back when I was like 16, maybe 15, something like sure. that. So it's like to be like 22, you know what I'm saying? That's something I intentionally made with my friend on my birthday night. And then, you know what I'm saying? We poured like a lot into that song and like to see it like get there and then like historically black place like North Carolina, like fucking with it, you know what I'm saying? Hell and yeah, Dom Savant fucking with it. True DJ, true true Savant. Yeah, it was like, came together real special. That's really cool, man. Honestly, cheers to that. I would cheer you to that one. It really does taste like a pumpkin. Yeah, that shit is kicking my it's good. ass right now. So, we actually shot the music video for Bell Boys for you. I see low like a gamble. I got problems like a handle. Peace, love, and still chop a nigga head off just for the mantle. My aim great, just stand still. Too hard skating on stills. Yeah. You and Hefe. And sure did. It was, it was a really good video. Yeah. And I think the funniest thing about it, and we were, we were talking about this before, was that completely improvised the outside shots, which came out the best. And like, the video is getting pretty good views. And I, I'm so glad you liked it. I'm so glad we liked it. And I'm glad we worked with you on that one, to be honest. Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm glad shit. I'm finally glad we worked on something, like, you know what I'm saying? Outside of just like the music tip. Because I've known y'all boys for like a little while now. Yeah. So we know like, each other for a good minute. <laughs> I can't even. It's I, it was, It's been like four or five years. I feel like I know like David and Juan the longest. Yeah, you, you've like, known them before. And then I yeah, met like, you. And then it was when you were part of um, LDG, or LGDA. Yeah, yeah. So um, tell me about that. Speaking of, uh, guys, great that awesome, bro. Yeah, you guys were in. You were. It was you and a couple other people that were in that for. How long were you guys doing that for? Uh, Little great that awesome was definitely like an uh, idea in like a a group before I had entered. But essentially, it was uh, it was some birth from my cousin's idea. Uh, my cousin Slater Black, for y'all that don't know, uh, local Phoenix artist. But he had uh, he had started this thing up in high school called LGDA. He had asked me to be a part of it. Like he would always see me at like birthday dinners for like a aunts and stuff. Like I remember like last time asking me to join was we were at Golden Corral. <laughs> That's been a fun I forgot Golden Corral. I think Corral. I had like just like just started high school or some shit like that. Or I might be I might be tripping. I did like yeah, I was like just starting high school or like middle school was just ending. We were at Golden Corral for like somebody's birthday or some shit like that. He had asked me like one last time, cause like every time before that, like I was kind of like, I always had like an excuse. Yeah, like, I was like super good. scared to like let that shit out. And I, yeah, like I would always like find a reason to be like, nah. Were you know. already like rapping before that? 
I used to write poems. Okay. Like, that was like my main thing. But like I would rap at his crib. Like so like he would push me to do it. Like we would like either like rap battle or like he would just make me like show him my raps and I wasn't like too comfortable with presenting at that yeah. time and shit. So it got down to that last ask and like shit, it was kinda like a peer pressure moment. Where I was just like, fuck it. And then That's next thing <laughs> next thing I knew, bro, I was in the studio. I had my first project out, uh, Stay Happy EP. And then we started doing shows and now I'm here. So did you have solo music before? Like like you were in that in the group or were you did you do it after? Yeah, I feel like my solo music was kinda like the initiation portion of like getting in type shit because like I had always like had ideas like I'm always like writing and shit like that but I never had uh, like enough like gusto like, especially when I was younger to like really step into the studio until I was like 13 14 yeah I mean that's young <laughs> yeah <I was> like, <laughs> that's young man I mean I've definitely just seen chunks of like what the fuck is the bottom of this glass bro yeah, it's like fucking like somebody. There's something in this glass. It's like a kid sipped out of my cup. Bro, it looks like fucking. It is. It looks like cinnamon or some shit. Just chug it. Don't finish all. You can leave it like the very bottom. I didn't. I'm not. I don't know what the fuck that is, bro. It looks like chunks. I don't know. It looks like. I look. Is pollen? Yeah, I can't do it. That should look like. It's glitter. fine. It's fine. Stripper just dipped the titty in. This is beer one, man. <laughs> Beer too. <laughs> Marty buzz, bro. That shit look. That shit looks like dehydrated piss. I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna front. Like, you, seen, like that's what happens when your kidneys are failing. Like I've seen plenty <laughs> of water bottles on the highway and shit. Like, yeah, that's definitely the tent right there. Cheers, man. Woo. Get ahead. Igor. So, you um, you put your stuff out under Stay Happy Studio. Um, so Stay Happy Studio, I was always like, I always thought of myself as like a background guy. I thought I was gonna be do a lot of background work. I had this series called Half Ride. <laughs> that I started the channel with. That's how like everything I started there. I made it like a mission. Like every time like somebody would ask me about some shit like on the weekend like. Cause I had a very interesting life while I was in school and shit. Yeah. Compared to like a lot of my like my peers and shit. So they would always ask me like what I was up to and like it just got tiring having the same conversation like eight times a day, like eight different classrooms and shit. So you just made a video of it. So I just videotaped it. I was trying to make one of them spaces that I could just get a lot of like my adventures out in one spot and not feel like compelled to like spread myself too thin as far as like where to place it all. It was kind of just all encompassing under Stay Happy like as an art studio. How long have you been yeah, like, like realistically working on music and stuff. And was it just writing or was it like, cause you're, you would do producing, was it playing an instrument? It was, uh, so shit, I, yeah, I started writing, when I was writing poems as a kid, and I say like kid, I guess, like before the age of well, 11 is still a child, but like this era of like my like writing and fucking making music from like seven to 11 was, Violin, drums, and like I wrote poems. Like, oh, good. You still play violin? Fuck no. That was, <laughs> <laughs> fuck no, I don't play no violin, bro. They, they showed us, uh, this, this is the term for it. They showed us how to finger the violin, like, showed us where all the strings were and shit. <laughs> Why am I laughing? And like, we played like a couple like ukulele songs on it. I remember like I had left that year. I, I think that's the year I went to St. Louis as a kid. But I can't remember right now. But yeah, like, so I dropped the violin. Picked out the drums, and like, yeah, I took the percussion, like, you know what I'm saying, fish in the water. That was Did like, you still play percussion? Yeah, I still play drums. Did you do shit. beats, obviously, mm -hmm. and you make, cause you make a lot of your, you make your own beats. Yeah, for the last, like, last, like, two years, I've been making a good majority of my own beats. That's really tight. Mm -hmm. Producing is hard. Nah, bro, <sighs> first few months, like, into using Ableton, I got, like, a way deeper respect for producers and shit. Like, I was still like a wild kid and I would ask like a lot of producers and I didn't realize how much I was asking of them. So I started producing my own like full length projects and songs and shit. Like, You're like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, a lot, man, a lot goes into that shit. Like just even making a beat like feel like inviting. It, like it takes like 
60 steps you know what i mean like i can't imagine that. i can't imagine it's like it's like paint by numbers but all the numbers are like fucking like smudged in so you kind of gotta just guess like <laughs> is that a two or a four <laughs> exactly like it's one of those situations like is that an eight or like a fucking like a three or something like you figure it out like that and so then you now you're more used to it obviously now yeah, nah, this is probably, this year I've been making my best beats ever. Like, especially like for what I've been producing lately, like this has probably been my best work. Um, ah, shit, like shit grew exponentially from just Eat Your Fucking Food Volume 2, which dropped in December, to uh, even what I got going now for the Halal Boys tape. That's your new project, correct? Yeah, so, uh, well, to explain, Halal Boys is me and the homie uh, Gorgeous Hefe. You know Shout out to Hefe. Shouts out Hefe, that's my guy. But when we come together, we are the Halal Boys, you know what I'm saying? And when is that coming out? Look, hopefully uh, niggas not mad at me, but aiming for this month. If we can get it out this month, that'll be smooth, but... So Mid-February, late February? Yeah, but I'll get, I'll get a rapper answer for right now, so it's, it's coming soon, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, it'll be there. I don't know when. One day. But one day, eight one day months later, up. you're like, hey, this is my, this is my album. Like, hey. And it's like four songs. Yeah. <laughs> She's like four songs. You're like, hey, man, where's the full four? <coughs> yeah, get some mixtape, bro. <laughs> one thing I can say, which I'm excited for, though, is like, we definitely got enough music for a deluxe. So expect the deluxe if the first one is not to your liking. Or if it's not enough music for you, we definitely got, like, and then on top of that, just I mean, bro, I'm working, bro, I'm working on like six, six to eight projects right now. Like, do you feel like it's like a lot to do that much? Like, yeah. you ever feel overwhelmed when you're working on so many things at once? Fuck, yes, bro. That shit is that shit is mad stressful. I'm not even gonna sit here and pretend like, but I think in a weird ass way, like, cause I don't know, to be an artist, you kind of be like. You gotta be on some like masochistic shit a little bit. Like just you, gotta, you gotta enjoy the chaos. You gotta enjoy the, the pain, the process, you know, that shit a little bit. And I kinda like I like being booked and busy. It, like it kinda give me peace to have something to work on. It keeps your mind busy. Time. Yeah, like, keeps you, like when you're not working on much or like one thing, you're you're ex, like, like fixated on it, but it's also like it's it's good, but sometimes when you're not doing anything, you're just like us. Like I need to do something. I need to be busy. I never want to be at a point where like, you know what I'm saying? I have no, I have no choice whether to do nothing or something. Like I want doing nothing to always be like a choice. Mm. Like if it's just like the preset, the default, I'm always feel like kind of in the wind. I'm gonna feel a little bit lost. So when was like the first time you performed? Because you been like making music for a long time. When was like your first actual performance? I really hope I don't misremember it is. Um, I guess ballpark it. Ballpark. I was probably like, I was probably like 16, 15. Cause I probably, yeah, it was like it was probably those U L shows. I think the U L shows was like my first taste of like a real, like stage presence type thing. And like anything before that, it was a, uh, it was usually like featuring on other people's songs, so like specifically my cousin's music and shit. So I would like hop on stage, perform my parts there. But yeah, I think that. My memory served me the best. I think it was the U Haul show days. It was like my first. Do you like performing live? Hell yeah. No, this shit is fun. I'd be mad, like, fucking nerve wracked, like, minutes beforehand, but, like, as soon as I get out there and, like, do it, I'd be, like, feel like insane. It's a, um, it's a weird presence. Like, you get, like, that euphoric feel when you're on, like, especially when you, like, when you get used to it. It kind of, um, I think I, I try not to put too much expectation behind it because like I started to get used to it and then that's when like the shit can kind of lose its magic a little bit. You get you too kinda, comfortable? Yeah, like when you get too comfortable, like I like kind of, I like kind of being nervous before I perform and shit. Cause like treating it like a new time, like it has the energy, like the way you rap and like the way you perform for people. Like, Well, I guess it makes you, I guess it makes you not as like stale cause you're not as comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Like you're not, you know you're gonna, you know you're gonna like deliver, but you also know that like something can easily go wrong. <laughs> and you open that tab, bro. I'm gonna finish this. Fuck this. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm on your heels, man. <laughs> Shit. Are you almost there? You almost All there? Right. 
It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. For being a guy that doesn't drink a lot of beer, you're doing pretty good. So we flip it onto its head, like. Yeah, you drink, drink it. it, and then you go like that, and then flip it so it's on this on this on this side. All right, you ready? As as I'm ever going to be. One, and then you go like this. Two, three, and then we go. Ready? Go. Alex, fuck, fucking shit. No, bro, fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm from the cheat, bro. Hold on. Nah, no. nah, he's an alcoholic, fuck bro. You, man. He's an alcoholic, bro. I smoke weed. <laughs> You gotta, bro, the game's not hard. God, that made me so full. Cool. Oh, shit. <sighs> Sorry, man. Puke, yeah, this is fucking. It's a lot of gas. Like you got a fucking bakery going. Chugging on, bro. You didn't even make one. <laughs> All right, Nick. Yeah, we'll, we'll, ah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Oh man, come on. I was like, yeah, I was like, he's gonna make one. He's gonna make one. So you're supposed to drink the drink, but uh, I, I feel I don't want to make you do that. I feel yeah, so, like, ah, I feel I'm so like, holy bad. shit. I feel so bad right now. I know you're gonna do it. I did fucking. He's like, put respect on my fucking name. I took a fucking. You took a major L. It's okay. It's okay. Wait for you. Wait for that. It's okay. I still got cocoa and shit. It's okay, man. It happens. I mean, some people, some people are winners. Some people are losers. I mean, hey, no, man. I'm kidding. Hey, look, I'm good at a lot of other things. <laughs> so I think my ego to withstand. Your fingers aren't good at doing that, which is okay. Yeah, you know, like you know, what I'm saying my hands. Nah, this shit delicious, bro. Shout out one. One good time. I chose the beer. <laughs> Fuck you, Juan. But you chose the pomegranate joint. Like, you chose it. I asked you what flavor, and you said I want the That's strawberry the lemon. Yeah, I asked nah, you. Nah, this, this is not the strawberry lemon, though. This, 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 the, uh, but I asked you what flavor. Oh, because he chose nah, that one. That one was good, too. That one earlier was, yeah, that was pretty good. Fuck out. <laughs> 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 out of here, bro. <laughs> I felt that. I felt that, man. Get the fuck out of here. I don't need that. <laughs> bro, don't, bro don't like when you get credit at all. That's that's what I'm peeping. <laughs> I don't like when he gets credit. That's no, what I'm peeping. Because he gets credit for shit he didn't do. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, he just... <laughs> he, he, he takes my ideas. <laughs> nah, I gotta be the guy. <laughs> That was definitely he's like, cool. you just, you know, he tells me, he's like, just be on camera and look pretty. You know? <laughs> he's like, he's, look good, all right? He's like, just, like, all you gotta do is look good. Shit, like, shit, them goods, all right? I'm just like, you're just like, all right, I'm sorry. That monetization money for that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking do this. Shut up. That's what he tells me. He's like, you can't say these words, man, if I need to get paid. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Fuck this shit. <laughs> that concludes our episode of Beers or Peers. If you have not checked out Lord Ra's music, please check it out on anywhere you stream music. Bandcamp, Spotify, SoundCloud. Preferably uh, Bandcamp. Preferably Bandcamp. But it's For everywhere. our local artists, um, catch his latest singles, Braille Boys, and Eat Your Fucking Food. And then his new singles or album is dropping within a month. Month, man. Within a month, got a whole project. Got a whole project coming. Uh, yeah, man, be on the lookout for Halal Boys. Listen to Braille Boys right now. You can watch the video on Stay Happy Media. Uh, yeah, shout out to Small World, man. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys.